In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. Have you ever met someone who is so good at their job that you're simply in awe of them? I had this experience recently this past year with an eye specialist at Cleveland Clinic. Uh, I was blessed to, to be cared by such a great doctor. And the doctor would enter the room, and a sense of solace and reassurance came about everyone that was there. It was a beautiful sight to see. And the patient was met with such a compassion, yet confidence, that emanated from the doctor that everyone knew that everything was going to be okay. And this sense of reassurance came due to the level of expertise that this doctor had. This was a world-renowned cornea specialist, so it was a pretty amazing person to be around. This isn't the first time I've experienced this feeling. I think we all can recollect people in our lives or people in our families that kind of inspire us and awe us with the expertise, their expertise in their craftsmanship and in, in what they do. And it's a beautiful sight to see these people of, these, of this caliber. It reminds us that it's possible to take what God has given us and to maximize it to its fullest potential. And the same idea can be given to us in our spiritual life, too. This same idea can be paralleled and looked at through a spiritual lens. So today, I, I kind of want to do that. If you look at the gospel, just very quickly, the context of the gospel, um, I'm going to make some observations about the servants and the talents and kind of connect it to our society. So in the parable of the talents, it's a very famous parable, a beautiful one, there's three servants who were not equally endowed. One was given five talents, the other two, and the, other, the third person one, each according to his ability. And so we can take from that that people in life, no two persons are alike in ability, and thus no two persons are alike in talents. We're not all endowed with the same level of talents. Some have stronger bodies than others. Some have more brilliant minds than others. Some have better opportunities to develop those talents, right? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But every person born into this world receives from the hand of God one specific endowment. No person ever comes into this world with no talents. And a nice little image that I found when kind of thinking about this comes from an anonymous quote, which I know is never fun. No one likes to hear, oh, this is from anonymous. But this is from an anonymous source. But the image is this. In every generation, there are a few people who are born with exceptional ability. Four-leaf clovers, so to speak. But the clover which, the fields green, which keeps the fields green feeds the cows, and the bees giving us milk and honey is the three-leaf clover, the common, ordinary kind. Most of us are three-leaf clovers, and there's nothing wrong with admitting that. There's nothing wrong with saying that. People with one or two unique, beautiful talents but regarding this, I often see a problem in our society that I'd like to kind of observe and point out. Our society lives in a fantasy. What do I mean by this? I see this quite often. Our society push the, pushes this notion that we're all four-leaf clovers, that we're all special so much that we don't even understand what special means anymore. And it's created an erosion of a true reality in our life. We are all fed this narrative that we are special, four-leaf clovers. And this clouds the true reality. It breeds false hope. It creates a false sense of identity for those who are endowed with one or two talents, aka most of us three-leaf clovers. But so many of us buy into this narrative that it can actually lead us in the opposite direction. It can lead us down a path of paralysis, lead us down a path of not knowing what to do with our life because we were just told, well, you can be whatever you want. That's a fallacy. You cannot be whatever you want. I could not be an NFL football player, no matter how hard I wanted to be when I was little. I wasn't endowed with that physical blessing. 
I was endowed with a, a minor blessing. <laughs> a minor blessing in that regard. But many of us live in this fantasy. Many of us believe that we're four-leaf clovers. And I'm not trying to diminish who you are. I'm trying to, under, to show you that our society breeds this false sense of reality that creates a very unhealthy way of growing up. And so when we believe that we're four-leaf clovers, we do two things. We either try to conceal our one talent, either by developing a superiority complex and bragging as if we had more than one talent, when in reality we only have one or two, or, or we create an inferiority complex and we deny even our one talent and we become in despair. We feel as though we don't have any talents. Both are extremes and both are not reality. Both are a fantasy. And so this is very dangerous. And we see this through a lot of young people today, a lot of children, a lot of teens, and even adults. A lot of adults struggle with this. And so what I'm describing is something that I find a lot. In my own experience, I see this. And so as Orthodox Christians, we have to live in reality and not this fantasy of four-leaf clovers. It's a blessing to know your limitations. It is a strength to know your limitations. We have to learn who we are in this respect, what makes us special, what makes us unique, what endowment God has given us and bestowed upon us. St. Paul kind of talks about this in his letters, and he talks about charismata or charisms, or talents, if you will. It's the same idea. This Greek word charisma or charismata means something that is given to man by God, which man alone could not have acquired on his own. For example, a person might practice the, the piano. These are kind of external ideas that I'm showing you, but you can apply it to the spiritual life. But someone could practice piano all they want, but if they're not endowed with that unique gift, they're never going to become Ray Charles, right? They're never going to have that special something that pushes them beyond just a normal piano player. Here in Akron, we live in LeBron country. This is where the house that the king built. You can practice as much as you'd like. You can try to dunk as much. I could try to dunk as much as I want. They say 10,000 hours makes you an expert at something. I guarantee you I will never play like LeBron James. He had a gift that he endowed and that he cultured, that he cultivated and he tended. And that gift, he was so faithful over that endowment that it grew to what he is today. And in the same way, we can do that with our spiritual lives. So that's one idea that I see. That, that's one issue that I see, is that we live in a fantasy of four-leaf clovers. We have to know our unique talent and be faithful to it. Another issue that I see, and this one is even more prominent during these times, is a comparison of gifts, a comparison of talents. This is something we all often do, and some, a, a temptation that is often uh, tripped upon. We have to remember that no two persons are equal in their endowments that they were given by God. Everyone is unique in that way. It's very important to remember. But we often forget this fact. We often compare ourselves and say, oh, if I had so-and-so's wealth or power or influence or his personal gifts or his charisms or her charisms, then I could do such and such. But in reality, we're asking the wrong question. We should be asking, what use am I making of what I have? How faithful am I being to the gifts that God has given to me, rather than comparing myself to someone that has a completely, set, completely different set of gifts? No one's judged by what he would do if he were someone else but rather by what, by what we are doing with what we have. We're not to be judged for not being a Moses, or for not being a St. Paul. But because we're, we're going to be judged for when we're not who we are. God judges every man by a separate yardstick, according to each person's ability and talents. It's very important to remember. And just a quick aside, this comparison issue is magnified 
And the temptation draws ever so more sumptuous when we are secluded and when we try to make a name for ourselves through social media, when we try to influence others through Facebook, when we try to create something across the screen, the issue of comparing our gifts to others is compounded and magnified during this time. We're at home, we're secluded, we're trying to be safe, and so we interact across the screen and it's a great temptation to compare yourself to what others are doing or, or to make yourself feel better because, oh, that person's going out and you're judging that person. Or, oh man, that person, look what they're wearing in that photo. Or, oh, that person's not wearing a mask. I should judge that person. So you see, we're comparing ourselves to others. We have to be very careful about this. We can't compare ourselves to four-leaf clovers or other three-leaf clovers because we grow jealous and we understand that, you know, we may feel that they're better than us or something of that nature. This is a disease that runs rampant in our society. Comparison is ever-present and always causing us to judge, ju to judge others. And we have to remember that when we compare ourselves to others, that this is the work of the devil. The devil does this. He creates this temptation, this seed, this plant that's implanted in your head, that when you compare yourself to someone else, you start separating yourself from some... You, you start magnifying that seclusion and emphasizing your isolation. And all it does is separate us. So we have to be very weary of this. And so... During this time, as we are coming, God willing, around the bend of this pandemic, God willing, run home. Run home. Don't live in isolation and seclusion after this is done. Run back to the embrace of your community. Run back to the embrace of one another. Run back to your Father in heaven whom you should be already embracing at all times. Stop comparing ourselves to one another. More now than ever, we need true community and liturgy and companionship with one another. Run home. Don't forget where you're truly welcome. We have to remember that faithfulness is required when looking at these talents, when looking at this parable. Faithfulness is required of us and our talent. God does not judge us by the size or the amount of the return of our talent, but instead God judges us by the degree of our faithfulness with which we have used our gifts. That's why he said to both the five talents and the two talents, come into my kingdom. You're welcome. You've done a great job because I gave you two, and so I expected two back. I gave you five, I expected five back. You know, it's not a numeric system. It's just an external image. We all don't have the same number of gifts, and that's okay. Thank God we have a gift. God will not expect the same performance from all of us. In fact, he will expect our performances to vary greatly. In only one way will he expect our, perform our performances to be equal. We should all be faithful. And so ask yourself, how are you using your talent? In service of what values are you using your talent? Are you using your talents for yourself? in the service of greed or power of worldly things? Or are you using your talent in the service of Christ? Are you framing your talent in the spiritual life and framing it in such a way where you're giving back to God and glorifying God? God has given us a unique capacity and endowment where no one else in the world possesses. And each one of us has a certain way of being or helping others an ability to do certain things that no other person can. But so many times we let that waste away because we forget who we are when we compare ourselves to others. 
or we live in a reality or a fake reality of four-leaf clovers. We all add something to this world. And that something is from God and it is beyond precious, beyond all price. And don't think for a second you are insignificant or that you don't matter or that what you offer doesn't matter. Don't think for an instant that that is true. God has entrusted you to be faithful over that talent. Faithfulness is required. May God give us strength, and may God be with us as we continue in this beautiful liturgy. Amen.